Hello, my name is Rogers Jackson. I am the pastor of the Emanuel Baptist Church, 8301 South Damon Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. I will be sharing with you Sunday School Reflections for Sunday, February 5, 2023. The subject of the lesson is titled, Wisdom and Foolishness. Wisdom and Foolishness. The scriptures are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 18 through 31. The lesson aims, contrast God's wisdom with the foolishness of people. <clears throat> Affirm the wisdom in following the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Letter A. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. For the preaching and proclaiming publicly of the cross is to them that perish and those who are being destroyed completely. The preaching is foolishness without spiritual insight the B clause, but unto us which are saved and delivered from spiritual calamity, the preaching of the cross, it is the power to accomplish what needs to be accomplished by God. Verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The A clause of verse 19, for it is written, I, the Lord, will destroy and ruin completely the wisdom and the practical management of the wise. The B clause of verse 19. And I, the Lord, will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent and those who are intelligent in understanding. Verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? The A clause of verse 20. Where is the wise who are sensible and practical? The B clause. Where is the scribe who both instructs, teaches, writes, and explains the scripture? 
scriptural law of Moses? The C clause of verse 20. Where is the disputer of this world who thoroughly diagnoses and scrutinizes everything of this world? The D clause. Hath not God made foolish who are without insight the wisdom of practical management and good sense of this world? Verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The A clause of verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. The B clause. It pleased God and was acceptable by the foolishness that is without insight and practical application. The preaching to save and to deliver them from calamity, them that believe and are firmly persuaded, being steadfast, unwavering, and unmovable. Verse 22. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom, the A clause. For the Jews who conform to the Jewish customs and manner of living require a sign of grace and power of God, the B clause. And the Greeks who are Jewish by faith and birth and religion, seek after wisdom that is the practical management of life with deep knowledge and moral understanding. Verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. The A clause of verse 23. But we preach and evangelize and bring good news of salvation of Christ crucified being nailed to a cross. The B clause of verse 23. Unto the Jews, Christ Jesus crucified is a stumbling block that is a rock or trap that is placed in your way. The C clause of verse 23. And unto the Greeks, Christ Jesus crucified is foolishness without insight and practical application. Verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, 
and the wisdom of God. The A clause of verse 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, the B clause of verse 24. Christ Jesus is the power of prevailing authority of God. The C clause. Christ Jesus is the wisdom of God that enlightens our mind. Verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The A clause, because the foolishness and senselessness of God, who is without beginning and without end, is wiser and more intelligent and enlightened than men who have infirmities and imperfections. The B clause of verse 25. And the weakness of God is stronger and more powerful than men. Verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. The A clause of verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, to be chosen and appointed to the work of God's kingdom. The B clause of verse 26. How that not many wise men after the flesh have sinful passions and desires. The C clause. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many wise men are mighty who are strong. The D clause of verse 26. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many are not noble, nor useful, nor profitable, are not called, are not summoned to the work of the Lord. Verse 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. The A clause of verse 27. But God has chosen and selected the foolish things of the world to confound and shame the wise who have a mindset that is sensible and practical. The B clause of verse 27. And God who is our creator and the finisher of all things, has chosen the weak things, 
that are without strength of this world to confound, to shame, and to dishonor the things which are mighty, both mentally, physically, and morally. Verse 28. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. The A clause of verse 28. And God hath chosen the base things and persons who do not live up to expectation of the world. The B clause of verse 28. And God has chosen the things which are despised and treated with indignity. Hath God chosen. And things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Verse 29. God has chosen that no flesh should glory in his presence. The A clause. God has chosen that no flesh of sinful passions and desires shall glory in his presence. Verse 30. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. The A clause. But of him, God, are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom to give us insight to teach and prosper. The B clause of verse 30. God is is made unto us righteousness that conforms to the spiritual authority of God. The C clause of verse 30. God is made unto us sanctification that sets us apart being consecrated in devotion to service, to the service of God. The D clause. God is made unto us redemption, being loosed and set free. Verse 31. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. The A clause. That according as it is written, he that glorieth in a proud manner, let him or her glory, praise, honor, and applaud in the excellent magnificence, splendor in the Lord. These are a few reflective remarks for our Sunday, February 5, 2023 Sunday School lesson, Wisdom and Foolishness, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31.
and I have a precious announcement. The Emmanuel Baptist Church will be celebrating 50 years of praise and worship. The first Sunday of March, the 5th, 2023 will be our triumphal entry. Our guest preacher for the March Circle will be Reverend Malcolm Walton. The second Sunday, March 12, 2023, our All Saints Day Remembrance. Our guest minister is Reverend Dr. Edward Brown, Jr. The third Sunday of March 19, 2023, Family and Friends Day. The guest preacher will be Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. And the fourth Sunday, March 26, 2023, will be the Alumni Day of the Emanuel Christian School. The guest minister will be Reverend Larry Linda. And then, the Emanuel Baptist Church's 50th anniversary, 2023, will have a luncheon this luncheon will be March 18, 2023. The time, 12 p.m. to 12, 4 a.m. 4 p.m. The cost is $50. The guest speaker will be Reverend Dr. Augustus T. Curry. This luncheon will be at the Chateau Del Mar 8301 West 95th Street, Hickory Hill, Illinois. More information will be coming in relation to this great celebration. We thank the Lord for Pastor Curry and all of those who across the years has served and helped and enriched people through the ministry of this church. Let us pray. Great God, our Father, we thank you so very much for the grace of the church, the grace of the people of God. We thank you for 50 years of praise and worship and testimony and outreach. We pray that this would be a time of fellowship, of friendship, and of worship. Let your name, great God, today and your great name tomorrow be glorified. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Go forward, my friends, and serve the Lord. Praise be to God who gives us the victory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.